It's not a bad place, really, once you've conquered the humiliation. No, but of course I wouldn't be here at all if it hadn't been for that ghastly dog, that Cerberus at the gates of... Yes, at the gates of hell. <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Big Dog. All right, Leslie, we'll take it once more. Now relax this time, and remember the boom camera's on you till you hold up the bottle, and then we go to a close-up of the pill. Right you are. Keep your fingers crossed. You'll make it this time. Need better. Those clubs are costing the agency a fortune. Quiet on the set. Roll it. Roll it. Are you run down at the end of the day? Do you wonder where your pep has gone? Then what you need is tone. The amazing new product designed to destroy designed your... Designed to destroy... Cut. Good grief. I'm terribly sorry, John, old boy. These commercials are deadly tongue twisters. Not deadly enough. Fire him. Get rid of him. Find me an actor who can say his lines, not some has been. You fire him. I can't. That's Leslie Adams. I'll be glad to. I'm sorry, Mr. Adams, but I'm afraid we'll have to call it off. Apparently, you can't remember the lines. We need someone who can Mr. Weaver, the man who could remember these lines would have to be part imbecile and part minor bird. I congratulate you on your wisdom in releasing me. I am a dramatic actor, not a pill salesman. Good afternoon. Uh, Leslie, wait a minute. I'd like to thank you, John, for your understanding to commiserate with you on our mutual employer. Let's try it once more, shall we? I'm sorry, John. He's through here. Let's not perpetuate this polyglot. I know you'll get it right the next time. There won't be a next time. Our single point of agreement. Good afternoon. Listen, Weaver. Now, Leslie, let's make a good exit. No matter who calls you back, don't turn. The scene is ended. Head high, Leslie. One more take if you leave him alone. I'm glad you did that, Leslie. No man who has played Bernard Shaw should concern himself with the small intestines. Oh, down, please. Thank you. Six weeks. Six weeks in Hollywood. And Leslie Adams is forced into a commercial. Well, a man's got to make a living. What's happened to my memory? Sixty-four isn't old. Why can't I retain the lines? Well, it must be this cold I've got. It's got to be, simply got to be the cold. The money's gone. Well, where will I go, the actor's home? If only I could get through to that nephew of mine. Well, Boniface Walter, how's the hostel tonight? A welter of mail and messages? Uh, slow, Mr. Adams. No calls for you. Nothing from Alex Kendall? Not a thing. Leslie! Oh, how nice to see you again. Jamie! <laughs> Here for a film? Oh, just three weeks. Are they keeping you busy? Oh, you know, the round of television. Uh, that nephew of mine won't let me rest. Oh, yes, Alex is doing well, isn't he? Oh, yes, and gone completely Hollywood. You know. <laughs> Even his wife's got a secretary to handle their social life. <laughs> Incredible place, isn't it? Ah, but I may escape it yet. Miller wants me back in his new play. Oh, Broadway? I envy you. As a matter of fact, Jamie, there's a young man in it you might play. Uh, shall I put in a word with Gilbert? Well, that's uh, always home, you know. Then it's done. See you tomorrow. Good night. I, uh, I know it's none of my business, but is he that important on Broadway? Does he owe you a bill? <laughs> As a matter of fact... I'll he... cover it. And the answer to your question is yes. Or uh, it used to be. Well, then he'd better go back. He hasn't worked since he moved in. His memory's shy. There's nothing for him to go back to. Hold it, buddy. Who are you? What are you doing here? 
I'm Leslie Adams. And? And I'm not a tourist from Boise. I'm here to see my nephew who's directing on this set. Sorry, orders are the stage is closed. Don't argue with him, Leslie. The man's too young to remember who you are. They ought to be breaking for the day soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll wait outside. Well, the days are pretty here. The weather, that is. The rest is like a visit to the dentist. It goes well enough until the drill strikes. <laughs> Leslie Adams soliciting Alex Kendall. The world turns, doesn't it? But it's only work I want, not charity. If he and Marsha would only invite me to one of those parties they give, they ask the right people, men who could give me work. Yes, they're coming out now, the actors. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which, taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. What happened to my tide, my fortune? Alex was directing amateur minstrels when I played opposite Joan Crawford here. Did he leave word to put me out? Oh, come, Leslie, you're neurotic about this memory thing. It's a cool, that's all. The actor's home won't get you yet. Oh, but how the rent keeps spiraling. The banks have had it, Leslie. You're cashed out for money. An actor needs his dignity. What is he but the face he can wear? Oh, there he is. There's Alex. No, Alex now, make I'm it casual. Alex. Don't seem to need him too much. Alex Kendall, imagine meeting you here. Leslie Adams. How are you, Uncle Les? Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, I was just on my way out of John Houston's office. Oh, you got a show with him? Well, he wants me in that Roman epic with all the spears and chariots. That film will look like a hardware convention. Everybody rattling around like pot. <laughs> Oh, you're a funny man, Uncle Les. You should have been a stand-up comic. I should have been a comic? Oh, I, I didn't mean to offend you. You uh, you could have been a great success. I have been a great success. Oh, yes, you, you have. Uh, well, uh, I've been meaning to call you, Les, every day for a month now. I wrote you where I was staying. I know, I've just been working so hard. They've got me directing so much TV, I'm beginning to feel like a traffic cop. That busy, eh? It's killing me. You... Yes, it's killing me, too. Not the work, the lack of it. Oh, uh, oh, I'm busy enough. Uh, Les, I'm sorry I've got to run. Shall we see each other? I hope so. When? Uh, well, look, uh, Marsha's giving one of those she-she parties next Saturday. You always hated that kind of thing. I don't suppose you'd like to come. Well, that is poker night with Freddie March. Oh, too bad. Another time? Oh, uh, what am I saying? Oh, dear... Now he's going to be in New York this weekend. And we can look for you? Well, if Houston doesn't hold me up. Oh, uh, it's Black Tie, Les. Oh, thank you, Walter. Nice of you to bring it up from the tailor. That, that's a beautiful jacket, Mr. Adams. Yes, yes, it should be. It was cut by the tailor to the Prince of Wales while I was in London, playing in Maytime. White for dinner was new then. The Prince and I made a vogue of it. This thing cost me 45 pounds. Oh, worth it, I'd say. The way it fits. Makes you look like a prince yourself. Thank you, Walter. Oh, what? Uh, Take this for your trouble. Oh, no, no, that's too much. A discerning man should be recognized. Take it, I insist, as a token of a special occasion. This is a turning point in my life, Walter. The comeback. Hollywood, twice taken. Sound the trumpet for Leslie Adams. All hail Caesar! And crown his head with laurel for the march of triumph tonight. <laughs> You are, driver. Keep the change. What is it about giving a big tip that makes a man feel confident? Well, there it is, Leslie. The Kendall Menage. 
An imposing pile of rock, isn't it? Beautiful, too, in a grandish kind of way. As I remember Marcia, she's a little grandish, too. She must hire a battery of gardeners to keep the grounds as well. Oh, well, well, that's perfect. They've got themselves a dog. Not just any dog, mind you, but a Dane. It's not just any Dane, but a Harlequin, for heaven's sake, cavorting in the sprinkler like something out of DeMille. Now, just stay where you are, boy. The Prince's tailor wouldn't approve of you. No, down, boy. Stop shaking. Go on, go on. You're muddy. For a man who loathes animals, he's extremely fond of me. Alex should keep him chained when there are guests. Well, Leslie, it's time to storm the castle. To carve a new career in those television films of his. It's not such a bad little medium. And you could bring quality to it. Good evening. I'm Leslie Adams. Oh, Mr. Adams, there you are. I was just passing the door. The other guests are in the drawing room. Please come in. Well, how nice to see you again. I have... No! No, no, boy. Down. Get down. Get up. Oh, dear. Oh, look what he's done. That mud all over my dress. Oh, what a shame. And he's darted off. Is there anything I can do? Thank you, no. If you'll introduce yourself to the other guests, I'll just go and change. Alex was held up at the studio. He may not be able to make it. Excuse me. No, uh, certainly, certainly. Oh, what an incredible performance. He's ruined her perfectly beautiful dress, and she's still going to let him stalk the house like the Hound of the Baskervilles. Well, that's Hollywood. Oh, great Jupiter, here he comes again like a wounded boar. No, 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 down, boy, down. Stay away from my jacket. Stop licking my hand. I have no desire to establish a friendship with you. Oh, and will you, for heaven's sake, stop following me? You make me nervous in this jacket. Oh, here, boy. Here, here. Here, come. Now, let's try the patio, shall we? There. Out you go. Good riddance. Yes, and don't fall in the pool. The displacement would be a disaster. Why did she call me Mr. Adams? That was chilly of her. What a shame Alex isn't here. I thought I might borrow the rent from him. What? Borrow? Oh, no, certainly not. All you want is a job, and Alex can give you one. No one stop worrying about the memory thing. The scenes are so short in film, there'll be no problem at all. All right, Leslie. Pick yourself a producer and get yourself a job. <laughs> Oh, is that a martini? Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, uh, Mr. Delbert, as I was saying, your series, your series is without question the most superior in television today. Well, thank you very much. No, no, I mean it. It's adult, imaginative, creatively conceived. Any serious artist should feel privileged to appear in it. Oh, I know I would, and I turned down parts by the score. Uh, go away, boy, go away. <laughs> that dog is crazy about you, isn't he? Yes, he seems to be. Say, do you suppose they'd mind if I put him out again? Uh, come on, boy, come on. I'll be back, Mr. Bell, but I think I can be of help to you. <laughs> now listen, you moon-eyed minotaur, you're not going to wreck my chances. I'm here on serious business. I've got to talk to these people, especially to Alex's wife. I can't have you fawning on me while I work. So, out you go. Out, do you hear me? Out, go on. Out! Oh, heavens, here comes Marcia. Does she see me do that to him? I don't think she likes me anyway. All right, Leslie. Charm her. She can persuade Alex to give you work. Talk about her house, her garden, her dog. Tell her she's beautiful. Alex can help you. And Lord, how you need it. Oh, what a way to live. You revolt me, Leslie Adams, soliciting these people like some beggar in the street. Well, what else can I do? 
Go to the actor's home. Oh, Marcia, Marcia. You know, if I'd known you'd wear such a dress as that, I wouldn't have been so strict. Batucci, isn't it? Or Marley Parnett. I know. It was done by one of Alex's designers. Well, that's another talent of Alex's, finding the right people. A designer, an actor, a wife. He's unerring. He's perfect. He was married once before. Well, one works toward perfection, you know. Ah. <laughs> oh, I saw that show of his last Tuesday. Brilliant. Oh, it was good, wasn't it? I've been a director, too, you know. I see the inspirational touches. Alex has a transcendent talent for dramatic grouping, like, uh, well, like Goya. Oh, do you think so, too? Oh, please sit down and tell me about it. Oh, for the love of Jupiter, is he back in? Oh, dear, and covered with mud again, I do No, wish boy, he... down, down. Get off that sofa, you idiot. Get off. There. Well, I hope you'll forgive me, Marcia, but it, it did seem wrong, you know, for that dog to sprawl on a velvet love seat. Yes, didn't it? Excuse me, Mr. Adams. I must see how dinner is coming along. Dear saints in heaven, I've offended her, slapping that canine pachyderm. Well, there's no time to waste. I'll get to work on Delbert again. You need a job, Leslie, in a series. You need a lot of ransom to stay out of that actor's home. <laughs> And that, said Schubert with a leer, is why we close our alley once a year. <laughs> oh, Leslie, Leslie, you're irresistible, isn't he, Marcia? Oh, yes, indeed he is. Good boy, Leslie. You really made an impression on Delbert. I'm sure you can get work with him. Now, if you can warm Marcia up. Oh, thank goodness they put out that dog for dinner. Oh, squab. I love that. What's that? Oh, by George, there he is again, scratching at that patio door and lolling his tongue out at me. I don't really like animals. What's he moon-eyeing at me for? Oh, thank you. I'll have two of them. Doesn't she see him? It's disgraceful what she lets that dog do. Why doesn't she send him away? Ah. Oh, there he is. Well, is she just going to sit there? Everybody's embarrassed by that beast. Don't look at me, boy. Stay away. Oh, no, 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 no. Here he comes. Right under the table beside me. Why does she look at me that way? Can I help it if her fiendish dog has picked me out? Get away, boy. Get away. Get away. Stop slobbering on my jacket. I'll be a mess. Give me a chance, boy. I've got a lifetime to save tonight. Where's my dignity if you slobber all over me? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Delbert. Uh, men of your perception are rare in television. You and Alex are rare. I said to Marcia, Alex ought to work for Delbert exclusively. That's where the quality lies. Well, I consider myself... Stop it, boy. Stop it. Get away from the jacket. Lord, how will I ever stand up? Tell if I can get this food down to him. Maybe he'll stop drooling on me. Careful, Leslie. Don't let them see you do it. Just ease the plate down to him. Maybe he'll stay off the jacket. Hungry as I am, that's more important now. Act as though you dropped something and get it down to the floor. There you are, boy. Oh, that fool dog has knocked it out of my hand. Well, don't stare at me. If you'd put the beast out in the first place, this never would have happened. He's ruined my life, filthied my jacket, deprived me of work, stolen my dignity. What chance have I now? Mr. Adams, I didn't mind about my dress. I didn't mind about the muddy sofa. But perhaps it would be better if the cook were to feed you both in the kitchen, if you insist on bringing your dog to my party. It's not a bad place, the actor's home, once you've conquered the humiliation. And there's one splendid thing about the home. No dogs allowed. Theater 
Five has presented The Big Dog, written by Richard McCracken and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, John Griggs, Vicky Bola, Ralph Camargo, Guy Sorrell, George Petrie, Bob Hastings, and Marty Myers. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Blostotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite and would appreciate your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.